I don't understand why I can't just flip the video over to selfie mode, from selfie mode to the other mode, so I can see your pictures. But here it is. Um, these were the be these will be the the fabrics that we need to use in our piece black. And as you can see, that's what we're working for. Um, I need to fuse these to my SF101, and then I can go upstairs and show you how to do that. Well, this is a boring video because you're just looking at that. Well, I could show you my mess. There's my mess that I created from cutting everything. There's my folders. And there's my other mess, as I mentioned. This actually belongs to the Sweet Holiday, Sweet Home Haunted Holiday, whatever, <laughs> from my girlfriend's quilt shop that Chris owns, um, the pom-pom. I didn't end up using the pom-pom. And that's the label for my home pillow, as you can see right there. Um, let me get the SF-101, which is up there. And then I will go over there and I will bond it for you. And then hopefully when I go upstairs, it'll be more action. Good action, not me stabbing myself action. Okay, Bill and I, we just got our tripod, but this is a learning curve too. Um, as Kristen always says, on certain parts, you don't have to worry about your thread color. I don't know if you can see the thread color, but I'm using a light gray. And the instructions are very clear, but they say load the embroidery file into the machine, which I did, which you can't see. And then it says to stitch the piecing template. So I'm gonna start my machine and I'm gonna, when they say piecing template, there is actually just stitching a rectangle. And that's what's gonna be used to put the fabrics down on. Finish everything. Okay, embroidery. Gee. Maybe I can show me this. So I'm I'm working on this part. Oh, they can't see that? How about that? No? This? 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 No. <laughs> that? Yeah. Okay. This is what my machine is doing. It's stitching this out. And then when it, this is done finishing stitched out, then I'm going to be laying pieces of fabric down. And it's ready. So I have to put my first piece of fabric down. Place piece one fabric right side up, completely centered over section one. This is section one. It's the watermelon. So I have to put it completely over that sec that section. I can see why this is difficult because you have your arms in the way. But it's completely covering section one. And again, it really doesn't matter. In quilting, if you're putting up putting pieces together, light gray thread or a light tan thread blends in. So it's fine to leave the light gray in there. Boy, that looks like I have a lot of extra room. Okay. Oh, that's because they wanted they wanted to do additional stitch, I think. Okay, let's let's stop that one for a minute. I put it in the wrong place because the camera sort of blocking my angle. I'm gonna use that as an excuse. Okay. If you notice. The reason I knew that I was doing something wrong is because where this needle is on the fabric, it wasn't hitting in the right spot. So you need at least a quarter or an eighth inch to hold it. A quarter is pretty good. It's gonna stitch the, the tacking stitch now. When you're doing piece blocks, the first piece always goes face up. And you can hold it or you can tape it. I'm sorry, what? You can use your pointer. Right? Yes, I could use my pointer. Okay, so it's stitched this line of stitching. So that means it's ready for my next block or next piece of fabric. So I'm going to lay this piece directly over that. Upside down. 
No, it's supposed to be upside down. Okay. Okay. But it looks like it could be moved up. There. Okay. It looks funky because I ran out of my SF-101. Okay, normally I use my folding pen, but I need to fill that up with liquid. So you can finger press this, and I know I'm in the way. But finger press it down. If you're afraid of your fingers getting stitched, which is a very real concern, you can tape it down. But my roll of tape is downstairs. Okay, so I'm gonna put my foot down and stitch the next line. Is my hand in the way? No. Okay. Okay, that piece is completed. So now I have to put another piece of fabric face down. And I center it over that last stitching line. This is really badly done. I'm used to taking, um, doing the, the projects on my own time, and I can then fuss with them. But you'll see that it, it turns out beautifully, even though it looks kind of screwed up right now. And you take that piece and you fold it down, do a finger press, or use your liquid folding pen, or you can use your small iron. When I'm doing it for myself, I'm pretty much a perfectionist, and I'll, I'll take the hoop off, I'll put it on my small ironing pad, and I'll give it a quick press. But because I'm already behind, I'm doing it fast and dirty. My hand in the way. Okay, that piece is done. I'm, I put my fabrics in the order that that you need to piece it with. Kristen always recommends to put your fabrics in the order that you're supposed to be piecing. It makes things easier, which it really does. Again, I'm centering it over this this line of stitching. It's going right over the center of it. Normally when I'm doing it on my own, I'll even trim, because I'm anal, I'll even trim some of that extra selvage, but I'm not today. You can also use your stylus. If I did sew my finger one, st one time, and that's not pretty. So you really want to be careful. See, it's like magic. You're piecing in the hoop. Okay, and that, well, fabric gets folded down and finger pressed or use your liquid folding pen. And we have two, two more pieces to go. Let me point out this. This is one reason I like to use the SF-101 or Kemper Bell's version of SF-101. With this amount of fabric, it could show through if you don't have your fabric backed. And that makes me a little uncomfortable because I really don't like that much fabric showing. So I'm gonna take it out and trim it to get some of the bulk out of the seams and stuff. taking your hoop off, always make sure that your thread is coming out of the back of the needle so it doesn't get jammed up. My dog is laying on my foot. Okay. 
And then we have this last piece. Put it over the line of stitching, centering it. And again, I always look to see the position where this is. Because if, if I'm putting it down and it's showing like that, that's wrong. If I'm going like this, see where the needle is in relationship to the seam line? That's too far. So you place it over that center stitching and then you stitch it up. Now the last stitch is going to be going around. It's going to hold on all the layers. I can't do filming here and then also show you my screen. But just take my word for it. It's going to stitch all the way around and then it's going to put a line of stitching in the middle and that's how we're going to cut it apart later on. And always be careful because you might not know which way your, your foot's going to start sewing and you don't want to sew your finger. Okay, we sped through it. We we put that piece of fabric down, we put the second one down, put the third one down, and we're we're too far over. This way? Here, you hold it. Okay. Ours look like this now. It has stitched all the way around and then it's stitched this way. We're gonna be removing the block from the hoop. And we're going to be using a rotary cutter and outer trimming guidelines as a guide. We're going to trim this block to three and a, three by six and a half, shown in red. After we do that part, we're going to use the center trimming guideline as a guide. We're going to put that ruler right down the middle of it, where that where this line of stitching is, if you can't see. And we're going to trim it. And after we do that, it's going to form two strips of piece blocks measuring one and a half by six and a half inches. Then we arrange the strips as shown in the diagram. So we take the two pieces and flip one. And I have to go downstairs because my machine only does not embroidery, it doesn't do sewing. And then we're gonna sew the strips right sides together, open the block, and it's gonna look like that. And then we're gonna do some quilting on it. So I'll end here. Okay, this is Kat again. Okay, I'm downstairs in the basement. I'm working on the piece block uh, for our pillow, and I'm at this point. Down, over, okay. 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 So I'm gonna take, following the instructions, using a rotary cutter and the cut, outer trimming guide, trim block to three by six and a half, shown in red. So, I don't, can you, can they see this very clearly? Yes, that, okay. So what I'm doing is if you notice this, the finished size is actually within this area. When I say finished, I don't mean true finished. I mean finished for the next part, but it's actually three inches this way. And you can see that it's actually six and a half inches this way. And I've got this line here. So, I'm gonna put it, I should use my rotating mat because I've been telling you to practice safe cutting and you should, shouldn't be putting your rotor cutters this way and this way and this way. Okay, so, and this is a very nice mat. Okay, oops, I'm, wait a second. I originally had this mat. It was very flat and let me show you. 
I had trouble grabbing because it always like stuck on the surface and then the block would move. So it wasn't, it wasn't helping me. So for, I think for Easter, no, Valentine's Day. For Valentine's Day, Bill bought me this mat. And as you can see, you've got these little finger things. So it helps move it. So I'll lay the block there. And I'm gonna put the ruler down here. And another thing I wanna mention while I have you is if you start getting careless or your eyes start going bad, you can start chopping off, can you see that? You can start chopping off the corners of your blocks or your squares. That's not too bad when you're doing machine embroidery, but if you start doing a lot of measure quilts or quilting, this little rounded dog ear isn't as accurate, but in this case, it doesn't matter. And I know I have usually one or two corners on the rulers. So, I just try to be careful. Okay. See, now I can turn the mat, practice safe row recutting, and trim the next area. Again, I can turn the mat. I put my ruler down because now I know it's supposed to end up to be three by six and a half. And so far, this, this part is good. And the bottom is good. I normally don't have this many issues, but because I'm trying to do this fast, it's not cooperating. Okay, I trim that side. Normally I would just go ahead and trim this side, but you really should turn your ruler. Okay, now we have this piece. I'm gonna take my ruler, lay it down the middle, and slice that. Now, through the magic of TV, you're trying to put this, oh, you won't just hit that way, okay. Um, I'm gonna put the pink watermelon one on this part and flip this around. Did they see me flip it? No. Okay, so you're like, you're like this, but now you're gonna flip one and you're gonna be putting it together like that. Yep. Yep, and then we'll, after we, I want to press it because I always like pressing my fabrics. I'll press it, then I'll move to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to assemble it. Cut it. Okay, what we're trying to accomplish is we want to line these two seam lines up together. And there's very various ways you can do it. It's easier if I was able to move the camera behind me, but what I, what I do is I flip it together and then, can you see this one yes. or not? Okay, okay. See where my needle is coming out through that, that one area? I put it the, in the area here. I line up the two areas together and I pin it. Okay, there's a lot of different ways you can do quilting and some people will then pin, pin each piece to make sure it goes where it's supposed to go. Some people, especially if you're not really a sewer, you might want to base this first to see if everything lines up. Um, I'm gonna put the one pin and then I'm just gonna start sewing it. I have a Janome M7. I have a special quilting foot on, which you don't need to, to, to use. Like I said, after you've been a quilter for a while, you start becoming a perfectionist, and you start using different techniques and stuff that you, you, you would use if you're just doing machine embroidery. And because I'm an old-fashioned seamstress tailoring person, I do back up. 
first. You don't have to do that. Some people start out with very, very small stitches and then they go. Okay, we're gonna aim for the first pin and hopefully that lines up. Cause like I said, I need cataract surgery. I, I normally don't sew this slow, but I want to take it out and show you if I'm successful. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Do you see it? Okay. And then you say, well, are you gonna back up? No, I don't back up at this point. What I do is I stitch over my previous line of stitching. And then I make sure that the next piece looks like it's gonna be lined up. And one thing you do with quilting is a lot of times it's tactile and what I'm doing and you can't see is I'm taking my finger and I'm pushing that piece against the bottom block so that's kind of wedged in place. So that acts like a pin. And then I do the next thing. I check that one and I pull it down. And I check this one and I pull it down. And I think even Kristen mentioned in one of the videos that sometimes what she does is she starts in the middle and she works one way and then she turns it around and works the other way. And that also is a good tip because that way you only goof up half of your strip. Let's see how successful we have been. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, it looks like that. Down, okay. Now, one of the issues that, that I have with putting SF-101 on the back and putting it on the complete piece is that it creates a lot of um, thickness through there. So when we take it over to the ironing board, I'll be pressing this open and I'll be putting it on my wool mat and I'll also be using my wooden pounding block to flatten that seam. Okay. Ironing board. You press it closed first. And like I said, I'm, I'm really anal about this stuff. So I press it on the other side. That sets the seam. Now we deal with this bulk. And this has been getting a little bit harder for me with my fingers but I'm forcing this open. It was easier on my 30th birthday. <laughs> Someone had posted balloons and they said they had turned 30. Okay, first I try to press. You don't, you don't iron it, you press it. First I press it down and if you can see, can you see that it's a, it's a valley or a hill? Okay. This, this would be difficult to work with. So then you take your wool pressing mat, or that's another topic, I'll have to talk about that later. You take your wool pressing mat and your black, and you press it again. Again, you don't iron it, you press it. You try to keep those open. As you can see, it's still not behaving. So then I spray it, press it again. I get a lot of steam and a lot of quilters don't like steam. So you gotta follow your heart. I press it. Then I press with my June Taylor, Taylor clap, clapper. And I press it again, cause it's fairly damp. And then I press it down again. Then I flip it over and admire it because it actually did turn out pretty good, which I'm grateful for. And then I press it from the front. Oh, you ironed it. Yeah, I did iron it. I... <sighs> Bill's a perfectionist too. <laughs> okay. At this point, we're gonna end this video because I have to go upstairs and do another hooping so it actually can quilt this piece. I love the Kimberbell quilting designs because it makes it look really, really good. As you can see, this does not have batting in it. When we do with the next next part, I will be putting the, the mesh stabilizer. I'll be stitching that out on the, on the block and then it's going to 
call for a piece of batting. I'll stitch that out. And then it will stitch out, you're supposed to trim the batting then. And then you'll be stitching out the next line, which shows you where to put this. And definitely need to bring my tape upstairs. And then um, tape it down to my hoop and then we'll finish the next part. Holding the, the camera so you can see it now. But this is my brother, Stellar XE1. I, I've loaded the designs on the disc, the quilting designs. I go to embroidery. I go to this little icon that shows I have files. I think I put it under that. Okay, yeah. Okay, there's the KDQ114 Sweet Land of Liberty quilting bundle. I hit that. And it says in our instructions, you could, they're, they're suggesting KDQ 112 Patriotic 3 2x6. You don't have to use this one. You can use your own or you can skip doing the quilting entirely. Um, so KDQ 112 Patriotic 3. Does it say Patriotic 3? Yes. Okay. I have to change my glasses. I think these are the long ones. Okay, um, embroidery files. You want block by block. I need Pez. And then you need to look. Now some people in the Chris, in Kristen's group was saying that their embroidery machine has a smaller screen and they can't see all these files listed that way. So in that case, I would just take the file you need, which is this, if you're doing the quilting bundle, KDQ 112 Patriotic 3, 2x6, and I would just put that on a thumb drive or send it from a brilliance to your machine. But mine, you could see it pretty clearly. So I'm looking for um, the 2x6. So this is 2x6. Okay. Looks good. Okay. Isn't that pretty, the way they have the flower pot and the pie shell? Okay. Then I, I push set. And then I have to push embroidery. Okay, now it's ready for me to put my hoop in the machine and I'll stitch it out. So do you wanna? Okay, so I've loaded the quilting design in. The first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna stitch on a placement line. The next step, you lay your batting over that, put your foot down, and you, st I'm, I'm gonna say this before it starts. I'm gonna uh, lay out my cutting, my little tray table and my scissors so they can trim it after it's done. It always goes around twice for Kimberbell, which is great because it keeps it down securely so you don't have to worry, be as careful about snipping into it past this edge. I just realized that if I move it to the table, they won't be able to see it. Mm -hmm. But I'll start trimming it here. I'll move it back here and then I'll put it back here. So you want to be able to stitch it to that line. I'm gonna remove my hoop and I'm gonna trim it a little bit. And this is why I like those other scissors. Ugh. Wrong scissors. Right scissors. Okay. Always turn your hoop when you're trimming. And don't ever trim on your lap. 
I've done that too, but you're not supposed to because you can pop it out of your hoop or distort it. It's trimmed close enough. I must spend a lot of time on my own just playing and fussing with it because to me that's sloppy. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so the next step is going to stitch a line of stitching. This, this bothers me. Okay, to tell me where I'm supposed to put the, my fabric. So they can, can they see this gray line of stitching? Yes. Okay. This indicates where you're supposed to place your fabric. Normally it's just a piece of quilting cotton, but we have a piece block. So this is now our piece of cotton. And we lay it down. Now, some people might say, well, how do you know which way to lay it down? Because you could lay it down this way too, but it's, it comes out to be the same way. Sometimes you have to be more particular and you have to see which way everything's facing, but this one, it's sort of multi-directional. So I put it down. And in this situation, it's trimmed already. So if I just laid it like here, it's it could move. So at this point, I do use a lot of tape because I don't want it to shift. And I try to keep it out of the seam allowance. The Kimberbell tape is, is very good tape. And if you get caught under this seam allowance, it can rip out and you don't have a problem. Okay. I definitely need hot tea soon. Okay, there's two, can you show this here? There's two steps left. One is the first, this step is going to stitch all the way around the perimeter to hold it in place. The next one, you have to think what color you want to quilt it with because that's your quilting stitch. Even though it says teal green, you use whatever color you like on your quilting. So I lower my foot. Another thing, sometimes because of human error, you can might, might move it one way or another. And Kristen's mentioned this too, that sometimes it will go a little bit off or you don't catch, catch it right here because the tape wasn't done right or something. Usually it's not a big deal, especially if you hold this, the things down with a stylus or whatever. As you can see, I'm stitching on the tape, but the tape will be easily removed. And there it looks like I didn't catch it. Okay. So now I have to figure out what I'm gonna quilt it with. Um, I think I'll quilt it with white. I may be, sorry about that. Because you could quilt it with you could quilt it with metallic, you could quilt it with blue, you could quilt it with the tan. Sometimes when I quilt it with tan, then when it's on the white, it looks a little dirty. So you could quilt it with light gray if you want to. But I'm gonna put a pause because I have to go. Okay, sorry. We picked burgundy because it was the easiest thing to go with right now. Okay. So I put my foot down and make sure your thread is away from your hoop. Sometimes it gets caught under the, this ledge and it makes a disaster. Now it's gonna magically quilt it.
occasionally I'm using my stylus because sometimes I'm trying to push that down to make sure there's no little pockets. I don't know if you can hear the punk, punk, punk sound, but it sounds like my needle is starting to get dull. When you hear that sound, you should change your needle. Okay, it's complete. You wanna take a picture of this? On my machine, it plays a little song and it goes back to the beginning. So let's say you had an issue and you found out that it didn't quilt for some reason here. If I don't take it out of the machine, I can just hit okay, I can hit this plus minus thing, and I can go, see this is the first one that was to hold, to show me where I was gonna put my batting. This one was gonna show where the tack down is for the batting. This holds down the batting, and I think I screwed, oh, this, this is for holding down the fabric piece. And here's my quilting. So it starts at the, at the number one stitch for the quilting, which started right around here. And let's say I did all that part and it was fine, but I had problems right here. The thread broke or something weird happened. I get fast forward it. Now sometimes you might guess too wrong. Okay, this is 100 and it was fine. That's 100, that's not right. 100, 100, it's getting closer. Okay, now at this point it starts here, but I don't know if I've missed some of the beginning stitches. So, as you can see, it actually backed up quite a bit. I am going backwards right now. Come on. Maybe do it by 10. Oh, come on. It's going the other way. That's forward. There. Okay. So you back up to a point where you're happy with. And then, since I didn't take it out of the machine, can you... Can you uh, get close up? It would go right down into that other line of stitching. So you don't have to get hyper. If your needle breaks or your thread breaks, you just keep it in, in the hoop in, in the machine and you go right to it. And at that point, let me get my needle up because it doesn't like the needle to be down. Okay, I would press okay and then I would press the start and I would complete it. But it's completed, so I'm gonna raise my foot. I'm gonna take off the tape, which is really hard. As you can see, I have no nails. Okay. Okay. Peel it off. I think Bill, you should do this part, honey. Okay. Okay, and I would continue to peel this off. See, look how easily they came away from it. So it's no big deal. And I would continue to peel off the tape. And then I would press it again, because I'm anal. Okay, and then it'd be ready to put on the side to assemble into our pillow. Done. Bill wants to get in on the action. He is peeling off the masking tape, a Kimberbell's paper tape. And he's doing it very well because his nails grow longer than mine and they grow quicker than mine. My granddaughter's nails are so beautiful. She gets manicures like once every two weeks, son. Yes. And they're, they're just, they just look really pretty all the time. When I have long nails, they, they get in the way and I can't function. It's taking you quite a bit of time, honey. <laughs> Do you feel any stress? I can see some hairs on your top with the change your top. We both got haircuts today. So we're we're fairly groomed. That's still tape, I think. We're working there. You can see while well, if you're doing this without being on camera, it does take a little bit of time to do everything. And like I said, I I'm a perfectionist. And so each point I really take my time and I'm also double checking that I'm doing the right thing. 
How's it coming? It's good. You should like the DIY things. You should be talking. Look look up at the camera and smile, and say something like, "We're Oops. almost." What's the whoops? No, don't worry about that part. Okay, it he was upset because my basting. Um, when it tacked on the stitches, it didn't catch that side, so he was upset because it, it came away from the, the mesh stabilizer. We're used to stuff like that. The dogs are outside barking because they know at this time, we usually I usually have hot tea, and they're sitting next to us watching the news. So how does that look? You wanna hold it up for the camera? No, I don't know. It looks pretty good. Okay, see it looks like that. Pretty quilting. Thank you, Kimberbell.